Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to my channel where we talk about cruise ships, cruise ship vacations, deals, issues, news, updates, you name it. And today we're talking about an issue. This has been going on for a while. Uh, it's now about a week old. This is a story that started in uh, what, what I thought started in March of 2018. The last two weeks had to do with the Norwegian Sun cruise ship. Uh, there was a cruise through the Panama Canal that was uh, supposed to be a dream cruise for 2,000 passengers, turned into an absolute nightmare. It turned out to be a construction cruise where decks were being ripped apart and toxic chemicals used in the process. And the night, the stories have just been coming out like crazy. Uh, but now it's like an onion. This story has become an onion. The more uh, layers you peel back, the more you find. And uh, I am sorry to say and sorry to report, this is a story that is going deeper and deeper into an absolute mess. Uh, Norwegian is, uh, uh, they might be in trouble on this one. Uh, this uh, story <laughs> starts from what I've found out so far from my investigative reporting, and I'm just a guy out of Creston, BC, Canada with a traveling show, a, a channel called Traveling with Bruce. Uh, this started February the 2nd. Uh, in Buenos Aires. This uh, ship was um, sailing from Buenos Aires on February the 2nd to Miami, and it uh, landed in Miami on March the 5th. I'm just looking over at my notes. That's why I keep glancing over here to my side. Um, it was during that cruise that passengers on that cruise already were talking about the fact that they were ripping the decks apart on the cruise ship that they were on, the Norwegian Sun for that cruise. And the next cruise, which left Miami, uh, it was apparently a three or a four day cruise. I'm trying to determine the exact dates, but it looks like March 5 to about March the 9th. Uh, there was construction work going on there. Then the reports have come out, a bunch of them from the 9th to the 16th of uh, March, Western Caribbean cruise. Uh, they, were con they were still working the construction on the ship at that time with the same toxic chemicals that uh, they were using and talking about regarding the Panama cruise, which of course started on the 16th of March at the end of the Western Caribbean cruise. The Panama cruise started, took everyone to, uh, took 2,000 passengers to Los Angeles. And we've been getting a lot of pictures and videos about that one. Um, now the ship is in dry dock until uh, April the 18th or so. And on the 19th of April, the ship will begin its first cruise uh, with paying passengers uh, after the dry dock from uh, Seattle, uh, and it'll work its way south through the Panama Canal over to Port Canaveral. And the question on everyone's mind right now is, will there still be construction workers on this ship doing a lot of the what we call the finishing touch-up work, like lacquering uh, handrails, uh, painting uh, certain areas of the public areas, uh, uh, still finishing the laying of carpeting, the tiling, uh, there's all kinds of opportunity for inside work to be done on the ship. It is, after all, being refurbished uh, right now in Victoria, British Columbia. Uh, but generally, these uh, refurbishments don't always end on time. And there are instances where on the first cruise, after a dry dock, you could well still have a couple of hundred construction workers crawling all over that cruise ship with their uh, tools, power tools, and with the necessary paints, paint thinners, uh, glues, adhesives, and all kinds of other chemicals uh, to work the ship. And uh, passengers wearing swimming suits versus uh, construction workers wearing hazmat suits and masks, it's not a fair fight. Uh, those in bathing suits are going to be in trouble. And uh, this is what happened on the Panama cruise. Another update for you, and this just shocked me. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I heard this. Uh, on the cruise from March the 9th to March 16th, the Western Caribbean cruise, the Norwegian Sun was going to visit uh, Cozumel. And Cozumel happens to have a, a couple of piers, very long piers, that can accommodate quite a number of ships, even the, the big, big ships. The Sun, however, was uh, basically not parking on the pier. This, the Sun, the Norwegian Sun cruise ship, came to Cozumel, but stayed offshore and unloaded passengers via tenders, their lifeboats, and had them go to shore via the lifeboats. 
And a lot of the passengers couldn't understand why this was the case. It wasn't a very windy day. It wasn't uh, bad weather, foul weather, anything like that. There was room in the, in the pier. The entire time the, the Norwegian sun was there, there was room on the pier for the ship. But apparently, it turns out that the amount of toxic dust and fumes that was coming off the top decks of the ship while these construction workers were working the ship, the pier, the, the people running the pier in Cozumel, they probably denied the ship rights to dock at the pier in Cozumel. That seems to be the popular discussion right now as to why would this cruise ship not have docked so the passengers could just walk right off onto the pier like everybody else, just go down the gangplank and enjoy Cozumel. Uh, there were two-hour waits uh, to get onto a tender to get off the ship. And let me tell you, a lot of those 2,000 passengers wanted to get off the ship for at least four, six, eight hours and get a bit of a break from this absolute construction nightmare that they were facing. Uh, and they had to wait two hours to do it. Unbelievable story. Uh, the details, more are coming out, more stories coming out all the time. People have been uh, writing into the uh, Facebook uh, discussion page that uh, since returning home from the cruise, a number of which went back to Europe, uh, uh, throughout Canada, the United States, and elsewhere, people have been going to see their doctors. Uh, they are suffering from uh, breathing issues, coughing issues, uh, rashes, uh, all kinds of side effects, and uh, doctors are looking at them going, what did you do? Where did you go? What happened to you on your dream vacation? And uh, out come these reports. Passengers who were on the Western Caribbean cruise have been seeing doctors. Uh, passengers who've been uh, were in the Buenos Aires to Miami cruise have reported issues. Uh, we're only still getting the early uh, reports of what really happened. What I now know and what I've heard, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to confirm it, but from what I understand in the last oh, 24 hours or so, Norwegian had originally offered a 25% credit, a credit against a future Norwegian cruise to the passengers of the Panama cruise, the Panama Canal cruise. They were being told that uh, a quarter of the amount that they paid for the base fare of their holiday does not include tipping, does not include taxes and fees, does not include airfare to and from the ship or any hotel stays or any doctor's fees. Only the base fare, 25% of that, will be applied to a future Norwegian cruise good for one year only. Um, as of last night, the story has uh, come out and uh, more reports are coming out that Norwegian is now offering a 100% uh, credit against the base fare for a future Norwegian cruise, but you now have four years in which to use it. Again, a lot of people from the uh, European uh, uh, nations who've flown overseas to come to this uh, uh, ship, uh, to Miami, to get on the ship to take this Panama cruise, uh, are out thousands and thousands of extra dollars uh, because of their flights and hotel stays uh, and other expenses, and now they're incurring medical fees. So uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is passengers on all the other crews that I've mentioned, from the Buenos Aires cruise to the Western Caribbean cruise, the short cruise in between, have not been offered any compensation whatsoever at this point that I'm aware of. Uh, I, I'm trying to determine whether or not a 25% credit was offered in one of the cruises or not. I still haven't been able to confirm that. Uh, but certainly the 100% um, uh, credit has only been issued to the Panamanian Canal, Panamanian cruisers uh, <clears throat> from April, <clears throat> sorry, from March 16th to uh, March 31st. We'll have to see if of Carnival does any other kind of compensation offer to other cruisers, but I, I can also report to you that from what I know already, a whole pile of these uh, people on the Panama cruise, the 2,000 passengers, not interested in taking another Carnival, uh, sorry, not Carnival, another Norwegian cruise under any circumstances. They're just not interested. They want a refund of their money. They're, they paid in good faith their cash. They want their cash back. Uh, they can keep, uh, as far as Norwegian goes, they're saying <laughs> Norwegian can keep the credits for themselves. We want our money back and we want to be compensated for getting there as well. Of course, this is a, a nightmare situation for Norwegian. The, the logistics of it would be unbelievable uh, to compensate passengers above and beyond the fare. Uh, and at this point, Norwegian doesn't want to do that because if they do that, they're liable 
to have to do it on all these other cruises. Now, my mathematics tells me that we've had one, two, three, four cruises that took place with the construction work being done at the same time. And that could mean, apart from the 1,000 crew members that were on board the ship, it could mean that upwards of 8,000 passengers were exposed to these toxic chemicals and uh, and uh, other uh, other uh, toxins, the, the debris, just unbelievable. The construction dust, the noise, everything. And that's a total of 9,000 travelers that could have been exposed to this um, construction mess and the, uh, the uh, pollutants from it uh, starting February the 2nd until um, March 31st, almost two full months. And it isn't over yet because the cruise ship will be dry docked until, like I said, the 18th. And on the 19th, it'll start cruising again. Uh, sorry, April 18th, it'll start cruising again uh, until May the 7th to Port Canaveral. And uh, we don't know whether there'll be more chemicals or other chemicals on board the ship because they won't be completed. We don't know what the status is. The, the line has, has indicated to one passenger, apparently, that they will be done. Uh, there won't be any problem. They'll be done. But uh, the line also indicated to passengers prior to the Panama cruise, prior to the Western Caribbean cruise, prior to the South American cruise, all is well. The ship's in great shape. You'll have a wonderful time. And that has not turned out to be the case. Okay, well, there you are. There's the story. As I know it, the updates keep coming in. I've, uh, I want to thank all of you who have been commenting on my videos and following me on my live streams. I am live Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time talking about cruise ships and this story and others. I'm also live Saturdays at 2 p.m. in the afternoon Eastern Time. If you like what you see here, uh, enjoy this commentary, finding it useful, please give me a thumbs up on this video. Also, if you'd like to stay on top of this story and others, please subscribe to my channel. It's free. There's a button over here. There's a button over there. And just subscribe, hit the subscribe button. You'll find one of those two buttons right beside it, maybe this one has a little bell icon beside the subscribe button. If you click on that, as well as subscribe, you'll be given email updates every time I make a new video and every time I'm about to go live. That way you can stay on top of what I'm doing. You don't have to try to do it yourself. I do it for you. And you can stay on top of the stories as they're coming out. I will keep reporting on this issue as it continues to develop as best I can. If you have any news or photos or video you'd like to share with me so that I can use on future videos, Please contact me um, and uh, I'll make arrangements that we can uh, share and I will uh, post this, uh, these, these videos on future videos. If, you'll, if you also don't mind, I would love it if you could share the story and share this video on Facebook and any other social media to spread the story out because the more people that find out about it and especially the 9,000 passengers that are out there, a whole bunch of them might not even know of the nightmare that has taken place since they were on the ship they may well be entitled to compensation. We should try to get to them any way we can. So if we can spread the word even better. Thanks again for watching me today. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. I'll see you next time. Take care.